I just wondering after you after you looked at some film if you saw Rui make any adjustments after halftime and and how um, his defense was able to improve specifically. Uh, I think our defense on Tobias was obviously much better than that first than the first half. I thought the first half we gave him a lot of comfort shots, a lot of uh, comfort space. We didn't uh, we didn't challenge his uh, dribble. We didn't challenge uh, his space. And I thought in the second half, we did a, a better job. He's a, I mean, you can't take nothing away from him. He's a, a, he's a professional scorer. I mean, that guy, he scores all over the floor too. He can post up smaller players. He can take the bigger players off the dribble. He's a pick and roll player, transition player, gets to the free throw line. I mean, we, but we, I think we can, the 28 points in the first half, especially, you know, the first, when the B got the second foul with six and a half minutes to go or into the quarter, I mean, I thought he took over and kept, kept them, you know, right around where they wanted to be. But I, I thought we were much better in the second half. We just got to, we got to play 48 minutes of, it, of that. And I asked Brad a little bit of the same thing yesterday, but when there were kind of a lot of small things across the board that were not quite up to par, what do you tell your guys to focus on first or to get them to prioritize on first? Well, I, I just think that we can play with a little bit more toughness. Not that we didn't play with toughness the entire game, but there are segments of the game or, or when I say toughness, it's not really the individual. Uh, some of our game scheme toughness that we have to be able to, to be able to execute. And by being in the right spot, I think that's, that's playing with toughness by by challenging certain personnel um, tendencies, I think that's playing with toughness. I don't know if we we had that enough. Uh, without, with that all being said, we still had a chance to make it a one possession game, you know, under a minute. Chase. Scott, yeah, just um, what's it like having uh, so much more practice time now? Um, what, what what does that change for you as you go in between games with uh, two days to, to work with? Uh, it's great. I mean, it's great to, if, if you love to be on the court or in the locker room and it's great to watch film. I mean, we, there was times this year we couldn't even watch a lot of, a lot of film from our previous game because we were playing the next night. Uh, so it was, it's good. I mean, it's good to be uh, here in Philadelphia and got a couple of days, three days between games. Um, we're not we're not here to overanalyze it. We know what we have to do to get better, and and we know we're playing against an amazing amazing team. They're the number one record in the East uh, for a reason. But I thought you know they beat us by a point in one quarter. We we beat them by a point in one quarter. We tied one quarter, and then they beat us by I think six. So it was. Very, I mean, it was a very competitive game throughout. There wasn't that many times that either team had a big lead where it wasn't going to look like it was coming back. But a couple of things here and there we, we need to do better, and, and hopefully we will. And uh, when it comes to executing a double team on a play like uh, Joel Embiid, what's the key to doing that without it not leading to a pass to an open shooter? Yeah, I mean, you got to have you got to have ball pressure initially. There's a couple of things that have to take place. You got to be able to you got to be able to be physical without fouling before he touches the ball, and then you got to have some good ball pressure. You got to, and then you got to when you double team, you got to be precise. You got to take his airspace. You got to take away his vision with with four hands, two chest on chest. If you could do that, that gives you the best chance. Now he's a very talented, skilled, big, wide body athletic and he's not afraid of it because he's seen it many times so that just gives you the best chance I don't think we did that enough last night I think we can get better um, and we looked at a bunch of clips where we we didn't do as well as we we're capable of doing it and hopefully we do a better job Wednesday night uh, if we do go back to that Fred hey Scott um, on a few occasions yesterday, Davis came around a screen and kind of looked like he was about to go up for a, a normal three around a screen and their length just caught up to him and he, he wasn't, he wasn't able to get the shot off and you guys kind of had to reset. What can you do? Cause I know you always say whenever he has a game with like 12 threes, you always say you, 
you would love to see him get that many every game. What can you guys do to kind of combat the Sixers length in those scenarios? So maybe he can get up to that number that you like him at in terms of attempts. Well, there, there's, there's, there's times where, where they're going to put two on the balls with Brad and pick and rolls. I mean, those are, those are times where we can get DB threes and without length bothering us. And, and we didn't do a great job of that. Um, our bigs um, stayed in, 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 in the scrum. We got to find the sweet spot and be able to give Brad a passing uh, opportunity. And now we can get, now we can spray out some weak side threes where length, their length is not going to be able to catch up with the speed of a pass. That's one thing that we need to get better. And then transition. I thought we, we missed a, a few of our shooters in transition. And we got to be able to be able to connect there. We've done a really good job of doing that. And then our set plays, I think DB needs to do a better job of setting up, but our bigs need to do a better job of setting screens. So if they do, if they do, if we do that, he's going to get cleaner looks. But you also got to give them credit. They know that we haven't shot the ball well from three, and they know that he's our best three-point shooter. So their there's their antennas are up, and it should be. It's like we have some some guys that we need to focus on that don't want to get, you know, clean looks. Um, with all that needs to take place um, for him to get better looks, I think we got, we definitely have to do a better job of doing all that to make it happen. Matt Paris. Hey Scott, I, I think Daniel Gafford at halftime was like a plus 18 and obviously some of that was not Embiid being on the floor, but just, how important is it for you guys to take advantage of the minutes that Embiid is not on the floor? And how did you kind of like that in game one? Yeah, no, I, mean, I like I like his minutes on the floor. You know, there's there's always other things to consider, and you know, we have uh, foul foul situations that we have to be aware of, and foul trouble, uh, and it's hard to play the way we the way we play, and he's he's as 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 athletic and as in great condition as any any big in the league, but the pace that we play, he's still you know he's still carrying around I don't know what he exactly weighs two sixty. Uh, that's a lot of weight to play you know ten twelve minutes at a time. So we try to break it up as much as we can and the game flow. But minutes his minutes on the floor has been really good and they. And they're and they're even they're gaining um, his minutes are gaining good experience as well. So I think the more minutes he gets, uh, I think the more things that he's going to be able to see instinctually. Um, right now, he's sometimes he's a little hesitant. Um, we saw a bunch of clips with Embiid and and with uh, Howard that I think that he could do a better job with. Uh, and, and one thing I love about Gap that he understands that he wants to get better and he's very coachable. He listens to our, our veterans. He listens to our coaches and he's, he's a, he's, he's a really, really talented young player that's going to continue to grow into a really good player. And for the minutes that Embiid sits, um, just how important is it for you guys to capitalize on those when he's, when Embiid is not on the floor, and how did you guys, how did you like uh, you guys handling that situation yesterday when he was in? When he well, was when in oh, Tobias got loose, yeah, you know, um, when Howard's in the game, you know, we want to, we don't want to give him any easy shots. We want to put him on the free throw line. We want to make sure there's no and ones. We gave up an and one on him, and he, he shouldn't have and ones. He should have two free throws. Scott. Yes. Uh, this Scott. <laughs> hey, Scott. Um, obviously, you know, a playoff series is all about adjustments and, and, and game adjustments. As a coach, how much do you enjoy that aspect of a playoff series of constantly adjusting and, and game planning? Because it's obviously entirely different than the, the long haul of a regular season. I, I love it. This is, this is what players love, and this is what coaches love, our fans 
Love it. This is a great time of the year to be in the NBA. Uh, the, the other 14 teams are watching. It's miserable. Uh, but it's, this is fun. This is fun. I know we're down 1-0. We felt like we had a chance to, to win. It could have gone either way. Uh, but to make the adjustments and do some things that we've done well and even try to even get better at them. Uh, our film session was really good. A lot of, lot of communication uh, from, from our leaders and from everybody. I open it up for everybody. I don't have all the answers and neither do the players, but we can find some really good answers together. And we've done that pretty well uh, through this year. Um, today was no different. We, we got some adjustments that we can, we can make that we, we, and then we worked on, on, on the practice floor so we can have it in our, in our back pocket when needed. Uh, but we have to do a couple of things um, better. We definitely got to keep Simmons off the offensive class. And, and then we can also wrap him up too. You know, we can put him on the free throw line. We don't want to give him easy buckets. And then we turned it all, turned the ball over. And that, I think in that fourth quarter, during a really a, a key part of the game, I think we turned it over five times in like a three minute period. Uh, so those are adjustments that uh, we can make. And it wasn't just uh, Brad and Russell turning it over six times each. It was the spacing. It was uh, um, the bigs on, on their two on the ball coverage. Uh, we didn't do a good job there, but that's the fun part about this time of the year, and I, I know our players love it as well. And, Scott, regardless of the outcome of this series, win or lose against Philly, do you consider this season a success? Well, I mean, we got a long ways to start thinking about that now. I mean, I know I'm excited about uh, this series. I'm excited about game two. Uh, just from like a before the season started, I was pretty proud of how we got here. As not a lot of teams would have uh, fought through the way we had to fight to get here, and, I, and that's, that wasn't that wasn't easy. Not, not only was it not only was it not easy physically, just from the game after game after game, and travel and road games and hotels and buses and airplanes. It's not physically; it's hard, but mentally, it's hard when you're not where you need want to be record wise. And we still just kept plugging along, but that's a, for a later time. We, we still excited. We're still excited about this series. I mean, we know, we know what we're up against, uh, but we know that, you know, a couple of things could have gone our way and we could be better. We can't, we can't afford. I mean, we know we survived offensively by getting to the free throw line. It's hard to be, you know, after the game, only having 15 free throws. I don't, I don't care how many they have. I, we got to we got to generate some better attacks and better opportunities to get to the free throw line. But that's a that's a big number to make up, and we've done a pretty good job of, of making that up all year. With our, you know, we're not a, a high volume three point shooting team, but we got a really dynamic players that get to the free throw line. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Kai Carlin. Hey, coach. I just really real, real quick wanted to ask you what you liked about the, um, the zone defense look you had against the Sixers in the second quarter. It seemed like it bothered them a little bit uh, yesterday. Yeah, I mean, we did. We did. We probably could have done it some more uh, than we did, but we did a, a fair, fair number. It's definitely going to we're going to continue to do it. Um, no, there's no mistakes about it. Um, I thought we did a pretty good job. I thought we got lucky a couple of times. So some of their good shooters had wide open looks, but we, we, we made some adjustments at halftime and um, also this today. So we can hopefully clean that up with definitely zone. We're going to throw it all at them. We trap from the bottom, trap from the top, trap from the off the dribble, uh, play a square up, play it zone. That's what we have to do. And that's how we, I think that's how we've gotten better defensively over the last three months as well. Thanks coach. Thank you. Right, last question to Christos. Hey, coach. Hope you're doing well. Thank you. I'm doing very well. Great. And my question is, what did you see from your team that made you optimistic about the rest of the series and especially for the game two? And what, how important for you is to slow down Tobias game? I got the second part of your question about how important to slow down Tobias. What was the first part? 
uh, how, uh, what are the aspects of your game that make you optimistic about the game too and the rest of the series? Um, we got good players. We got good players that love to compete, uh, that love, they have a great sense of bounce back ability. We've always seemed to be able to do that. I don't know with all the stuff that's gone on, just the mental toughness, it just kind of built it um, through all the stuff that's happened to us. But I'm, I'm confident we, we will play better. I mean, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful, I'm, but they, they, they feel the same way now. Let's face it, they're a good team. They're the best team. They're gonna try to you know, make adjustments as well as we are. And then Tobias Harris, we just gotta do a better job of, of not getting him in any of the easy ones. He's gonna make tough ones, man. That guy. That guy makes tough shots. He, he made a couple of tough shots on Rui that I'm like, there's nothing else Rui could have done. And you, you can look at the, and I, what I like to do, I like to really look at like really slow motion where, where the shot is being released, where the hand is being uh, contested at the ball. And we couldn't have done much better. That guy is, like I said, he's a professional scorer. I don't know, I mean, I think Definitely, he's an all-star player, and I don't know why he hasn't been one. But we need to do a better job on him. That was your first ever NBA playoff game that you played in yesterday. Uh, what was that experience like for you, and how did it match up to your expectations? Oh, you know what? Um, it was different. Uh, a lot of people, the players, uh, the coaches always – Telling me the, how the playoffs are different in the games, you know, more physical, more intense and stuff. And then we keep, uh, they always keep saying um, that the positions matter, you know. And then, yeah, last night I felt that, you know, it was a different intense. And then yeah, it was fun to play. Um, I mean, we lost the game, but, you know, um, yeah, that was my first playoff game. And, and uh, T Tobias Harris got really hot in the first half. I know you were guarding him for a good portion of that. What What do you feel like you can uh, do do in future games if he gets hot like that to to try to hinder him a little bit? Um, I mean, he was they were they were running like a lot of stuff. Um, you know, uh, I was just keep getting the screen and stuff, um, and then he gets the space, and you know, and then it looks like he's score. So I just gotta be more physical, you know, just attached to him. Um, I just gotta, you know, avoid uh, getting, keep getting the screen. You know, that's I think the key to guard him. Like, you know, just gotta be on uh, his body the whole time. Um, and then just pressure him. Ava. Hey, Rui, um, kind of on that same page, what was your preparation like for the playoff game? Was it any different? We were talking to, to Davis yesterday, and he was just saying, just even going through scouting reports, like you're looking at so much more detail and you're going through players multiple times. Yeah, for sure. Um, it kind of reminds me of a college when I was in college, you know, because uh, in the college, we always like watching film, you know, and then just like focus on one team, you know. Um, Especially at the NBA, like, you know, we, since we play like every game, different teams. So we just, I mean, we, we watch films and stuff, but like, you know, no, like uh, so much details, you know. But yeah, this time, um, you know, we know who we play. So we just like more details, like watching more, a lot of stuff, details. And, you know, and of course they do that too, same thing. So they know what they, they know what we're going to do, offense brief, defense brief, and, you know, it's a, it's a, it's very interesting, you know, it's a different experience for me, so yeah. And last week, obviously you guys, after the Boston game, you came back and, and had such a great performance against Indiana. Do you feel like that experience and kind of, I know you were playing different teams last week, but just playing in the series and knowing you're going to have a second chance to come out, do you feel like that'll help you this time around or does it feel different? Yeah, for sure, you know, uh, especially we have a two days between those games and, you know, I can watch more film with the coaches, you know, um, and then yeah, I just prepare for it, you know. Um, it's just like more intense and more physical, so I just gotta take care of my body and then just get ready for the next game. Chase. Hey, Rui, um, what have you learned about watching film and uh, the best ways to 
to, I guess, learn from watching film in your two years in the NBA as you now take those skills into a playoff series? Uh, I mean, it's like, you know, like I said, you know, we know who we playing, you know. Um, we are at least going to play four games against them, um, you know. So we just, and then we already play them like a full time this year. And then we have a lot of, you know, we, we know what they trying to do and, you know, what they don't like and stuff. So, but we just got to want to execute, you know, our plan. Um, last night we are kind of, we are doing that, but like we are just, just like, you know, kind of didn't like it do, you know, I was, we just, just being a physical, you know, they were, they were hitting us first and, you know, we just like kind of taking it. So we just gotta be more physical. I think uh, next game, um, and then you know, of course, we watch film a lot of we watch a lot of films, and we just gotta execute more of those details. What do you think is key to executing a good double team, um, particularly on a guy like Joel Embiid? As you um, put together a double team, what are the key objectives? Um, I think. It, just like if you're gonna do it, you just gotta go for it, you know. Last night we were kind of like, you know, just doing the half ass, you know, just like, you know, we kind of kind of floating and stuff. So, you know, we just gotta be more aggressive um, from the beginning. And then, yeah, and then we just gotta more communicate, you know, um, on the defense, we, you know, like the four bigs, we gotta help the bigs, you know. I know he's the best, uh, he's one of the best players, you know, he's NBA, MVP, you know, and so, you know, we just gotta, help those bigs to, yeah, just go, you know, one of the best players in the league. Scott. Hey, Rui, you're obviously kind of living out a childhood dream, playing in the playoffs and becoming the first Japanese player to play in an NBA playoff game. <clears throat> I'm wondering what kind of impact do you hope that has back in Japan? Oh, uh, it's actually big for sure, you know. Um, you know, the NBA, like the basketball, the basketball in Japan is growing right now, you know. Um, there's more, a lot of people watching the basketball and it's actually easy to access, you know, watching the NBA games and stuff. But yeah, it's a, uh, it's good, you know, it's just a uh, little by little, you know, every year, you know, making the history, you know, um, it's just like, you know, for me, it's like, it's the type of stuff like I want to do since I was a kid, you know, I want to, you know, help this basketball you know, culture in Japan, and I think it's going in that way. So, yeah, it's good. You know, Rui, being the first, does that mean anything to you? Does it, or maybe not them? I mean, what, what does that type of stuff mean to you? Like being the first so-and-so, being the first Japanese player to play in an NBA playoff game? Uh, it's for sure, it's an honor, honor to be in a position like that. Um, you know, I just got to, uh, you know, but. I want like, you know, more of those kids to be like that, you know, um, it's not only me, but, you know, there's a I hope there's going to be a lot of kids, you know, playing the NBA and, you know, playing playoffs and stuff, you know, just, you know, just gotta, you know, those kind of stuff, you know, I'm so, you know, I'm happy to help, you know, those kids to, you know, just being there like that. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. Thanks, Rui. Mark. Yes, Rui, really, you, you talked about um, playing uh, Tobias Harris off the screens. Do you personally have to fight more off the screens or give get another man, pick him up? Like, what, what did you mean about that, playing him off the screens? You know, there are, there's a lot of, uh, there's a two big guys. Um, they said it's good screen, you know, Joy MB and then Dwight Howard, you know, they, they're both, uh, good, you know, both great screeners. So we just got to, I just got to, you know, get through those screen, you know, somehow avoid it, you know, just being the physical and attaching to him. And yeah, that's the only way, you know, so I can get in a good position, you know, before he set up. Um, so yeah, that's what I meant. What did you learn about the Sixers after the game, the game one? What, what was the biggest lesson of that game and what would you like to, to improve? the game to? Um, really just, you know, the level of physicality that we play with, I feel like we can play a little bit more. Um, well, just in my position, just uh, when I came into the game, 
I think it was the first foul that I had got. It was I was um, boxing out Ben Simmons and whatnot, and he kind of wedged me under the basket. It's just really just being having you know a level of awareness and uh, awareness. Uh, yeah, a level of awareness and just really just the mindset to come in and just be ready to play um, instead of just having to have something or just really just any type of situation kind of wake you up. You know, you just got to be ready to play, especially if it's in the playoffs. I mean, this is obviously my first, you know, playoff game that I just played. And it was a lot of, you know, a lot of crazy energy that was going on and stuff. But, I mean, I was prepared for it. So, I mean, I came out and I was in a mindset. I was just, like, ready to play. But then I first checked in. Ben had pushed me under the basket. I got my first foul. And it just showed, like, yeah, it's time to go. Because, you know, the level of physicality, it was going to be way top tier. And then playing guys like Dwight Howard, Joel Embiid, you have to come out with the mindset, you know, just really just try to push them around more than they try to push you around. That's just – um. That was just my mindset. You know, we was um tried to throw a lot of different things at Joel. We tried to, you know, throw a lot of different things at I would say Tobias Harris and um Dwight Howard, certain things like that. But yeah, just like my main takeaway from it is just the level of physicality and the level of awareness that guys come out to play with. You know, guys come out ready to play, come out ready to go and they have a they have a job on their mind and they come out and they do their job. Thanks. Hey, Daniel, just uh, what was the experience like playing in the playoffs for the first time? I know you got sort of a taste of it with the playing tournament, but what was it like being in the playoffs? Oh, just the energy here in Philly. It was crazy. You know, it's, you know, it's been a while since you've seen an arena like that full, especially with this COVID season going on and stuff. But just the, the level of, you know, intensity that's around the arena from the fans to the players, you know. And it's been, you know, I, guess, I ain't going to lie to you, it's been a minute since I've heard an arena to where like I almost had to cover my ears. And I played in Bud Walton Arena, so it's it's totally different. <laughs> and uh, what are your objectives? Um, you know, when, when a double team happens uh, on Joel Embiid, and, and you know, you guys want to prevent it from from leading to a pass to an open shooter. Um, what are your kind of objectives there? Really, just you know, I would say, and this may be hard to do, you know, but I mean. I'm up for the challenge if my if my teammates are up for the challenge. Just really just trying to bring him out of his comfort zone. You know, he can't get really comfortable when it comes to either playing one on one defense on him or just really just double teaming him. We can't let him do the things that you know he's comfortable of doing when it comes to having all kind of things thrown at him. Like with the double teams that we had in the first game, you know, he was dribbling around us, he was making passes out to shooters and certain things like that. We gotta take all those options away from him if we want to be willing to succeed in a game like this. Uh, because, you know, Joel, he's a great player. And just, you know, it's not just going to take one thing to stop him. It's going to take one thing and a lot more behind that to stop him, for sure. I mean, he's the MVP. You know, you got to give him props because he, you know, he worked his ass off to be in this position that he's in. So he's for sure going to be able to, you know, figure things out and adjust to it. We just have to throw a lot of things at him. So with him being able to adjust to it, we just have to make sure, like I said, just, you know, as hard as it's going to be, and we're, we'll be up for the challenge for sure. Just really just take him out of his comfort zone, you know. Fred. Hey, Daniel. Um, the Sixers have so many long defenders who are on the perimeter. I'm just wondering, how is, how is it different for you as a screener, kind of trying to screen a guy like, say, Ben Simmons, uh, as opposed to, maybe when you're more used to having to kind of impede smaller guys? Um, it's for sure different. I've been, I've had to screen, you know, guys of his height before, just not of just, you know, I would say his size when it comes to weight size, for sure. He's more of a physical guy coming off of a screen, in my opinion. Um, and when he was on Brad, he was just, you know, just like tenacious. He was really just trying to make sure Brad really didn't touch the ball when I was trying to set him screen and certain things like that. So, like I said, with that level of physicality, you got to make sure, you know, you get a hit on him or just pretty much anybody that you're screening when it comes to the playoffs because, I mean, guys aren't going to let you, you know, just walk through the paint and just score a bucket or anything like that. Guys aren't going to let you do that in general. You know, that's basketball. Everybody is coming out and they're, you know, going to play at, you know, a whole different level than the regular season. So, just making sure that I can do the best I can to get guys open. It's just my main priority. Like Brad, um, you know, he, like I said, like you said, he had Ben Simmons on him. Ben Simmons is a very physical guy. He's a very defensive player for sure. And, 
you know, just making sure we can, you know, out physical him when it comes to setting screens, that's going to be good for us because, I mean, it's going to get our guys open. It's going to be able to score for us and make plays for us and stuff like that. And on a similar note, Davis is a guy who, who runs off of off ball screens all the time. How do you, I mean, you've played with him for like two months now. Mm -hmm. Do you, do you talk to him like that and like, and like try to develop chemistry with him by talking about how he likes to run around? Like, how do you develop that screen and, and teammate uh, kind of connection? Yeah, I would say it's more of just like off the court that I talk to him. It's not really just like in game situations. We really just uh, talk maybe like back in the locker room at halftime or maybe like on the sideline when we're on the bench or maybe even time out. Sometimes it's in the game too, for sure. Um, just figuring out ways to get him open, how he can get help himself be able to, you know, receive a screen for me and certain things like Because a lot of guys that top lock him and try to keep him from coming off the screen. But uh he really just, he does a lot of movements and stuff that really can like help open him up and stuff. And it helps me get in a position to where I can set the screen for him to get him that shot he wants, certain things like that. So um, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. The conversations that we have, you know, it's, it's helped us build a lot of chemistry because it's, you know, coming down to transition and certain things like that. If we're not going to run a set play or anything like that, those can be one of our plays for sure. Just going down, getting DB, getting them open for a three ball. And then if like the big helps up, boom, he can make the extra pass dunk. He can dump down that extra pass if he just play out of that. I either have a bu I either have a bucket or the guy helps off the corner. We throw it to the corner and get a three. And I know this is a little uh, uninvolved, but you're playing in the playoffs right now. Last year, you didn't even get a chance to go to the bubble. I'm, I'm just curious, during like those nine months or around this time last year when, when you're not in the bubble, what were you doing? Well, you know, just – being in the league, sometimes it's good to take a break mentally, physically, emotionally, all of that. So I, I would say I took about maybe two weeks off for sure, rested my body up, tried to, you know, just get back into, you know, that mindset of like, yeah, it's time to get back to work. And for sure. So I took the two weeks off, you know, kind of rested, took care of my body, did things that would really just like help me clear my mind mentally, kind of forget about everything that happened before you know forget about the past and just come out and be ready to uh, be better for the next season so after that two weeks you know i i was in the gym it was either i was in the gym in chicago or i was in the gym back in arkansas certain things like that COVID was around so it was really it was really tough at the time um but yeah for sure just took the two weeks off and got right back to it because i didn't want to be i didn't want to be one of those guys that just you know take a break and keep taking a break throughout the summer. And then boom, I come back the next season and I'm out of shape. I don't have, I didn't have the weight that I had the year before and anything like that. So I just really just kind of like try to lock, try to lock in as much as I can during the summer too, because that helps me work on my craft and, you know, um, work on the things that I didn't do the year before that I can do the next summer upcoming one.